San Salvador, September 7th. What you hear are hundreds of marching Salvadorans. And if you want to understand why, the answer is here. I will send to Congress a bill that will make Bitcoin a legal tender in El Salvador. It was at the Bitcoin 2021 conference in Miami, and the one announcing it is Nayib Bukele, the muy popular president of El Salvador. In one announcement, he has just turned his country into the epicenter of cryptocurrency. El Salvador becomes the first country in the world to accept the cryptocurrency as legal tender. Den Bitcoin als offizielles Zahlungsmittel einführte. Salvador's official adoption of Bitcoin as legal currency that starts today. This law has a name, the Lay Bitcoin. And what it says is since September 7th, every business in the country must accept Bitcoin as a means of payment. Una Coca-Cola. Nice. And there is more. According to Nayib Bukele, this new law would allow Salvadorans abroad to send money to the country without any bank fees, a saving of $400 million. Bitcoin would also serve to emancipate itself from the big, big dollars, still an official currency here, and would then escape from the American imperialism. So yeah, that's a big deal here. So we went there for this historic day where the country woke up with its new official currency, the Bitcoin. And in the city center, several Bitcoin ATMs are already installed to allow Salvadorans to buy the cryptocurrency. Uh, compré Bitcoin para probar, compré 15 dólares. Este, sí está la transacción ya. Mi idea es este seguir comprando ¿verdad? y a ver qué pasa en el futuro. O sea, guardarlo, guardarlo con la esperanza que suba. Tenerlo como un ahorro. 200 Bitcoin ATMs should be deployed throughout the country. And to encourage them to download the digital wallet Shivo, the government is even offering $30 worth of Bitcoin to each person who opens an account. Parece complicado. No, fácil. Fácil, fácil. Probablemente esto eh, va a ser el futuro de la moneda en El Salvador. Bueno, por el momento, este, ver si uno va a un, un delivery, una cafetería, compartir un café con los amigos, la familia, y, y si a alguien se le debe un dólar, pagarle el dólar. <laughs> well, he seems already convinced, but they are still rare in the country. In fact, many Salvadorans are still resistant to the lay Bitcoin. According to a study by a university in El Salvador, 70% of Salvadorans are even against this reform and regularly demonstrate in the capital. And of course, on D-Day, the anti-Bitcoiners were well prepared. No, 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 no. No, se le preguntó a la población salvadoreña eh, si querían o no la ley del Bitcoin y ahora entra en vigencia y por lo tanto por eso nos estamos manifestando. ¿Cómo es posible que en este país una ley inconsulta sea tomada de la noche a la mañana? And amongst them, there is a voice that stands out more than the others. Yo personalmente ni mi familia no tenemos Bitcoin y no nos interesa tampoco. This is Eugenio Chicas, the ex-president of the Supreme Electoral Tribunal of El Salvador. And since Nayib Bukele's announcement, he has been crisscrossing the capital, neighborhood by neighborhood, to convince residents to join him in his fight. No queremos Bitcoin. Si gusta, se lo coloco ahí. Gracias, gracias. Se lo pongo. Una moneda que así como sube, así baja. Fuerza. Sí. Uno no es el momento más acertado para un giro económico de esta naturaleza por las condiciones de depresión en que está la economía, pero también porque en el país existe una profunda brecha digital que dificulta la implementación 
de una medida económica de esta envergadura. No, imagínense, y, y hay gente que ni internet anda en el teléfono. ¿Cómo vamos a andar internet si no hay dinero? Ah, sí, así es. O hay que usar teléfonos especiales. Esa es una estafa para, para sí. el pueblo. El gobierno ha hecho una transferencia de 203 millones de dólares para que inicie la operación del Bitcoin. 203 millones es lo que cuesta el funcionamiento de los 30 hospitales con que cuenta este país. And to make matters worse, the president, Nayib Bukele, bought on D-Day 550 bitcoins for a value of about 22 million dollars. At the same time, the price of the cryptocurrency fell by about 10%. Entre la compra que se anunció ayer en la tarde y ahora ha, habido, ha existido una pérdida de más o menos 2 millones de dólares. Tatiana Marroquín es un economista y, como muchos observadores, ella denuncia los métodos del presidente. Nos estamos refiriendo a no a la criptomoneda. La gente se está refiriendo no a la forma en que se ha implementado la política pública en El Salvador, que da grandes espacios de incertidumbre, de poca transparencia y de que no sabemos cuáles son los objetivos reales de eso. If you're looking for a place where people don't worry about Nayib Bukele's intentions, you have to go to the heart of the posh neighborhoods, to the Zona Rosa. Here, it's party time. The future is now. This is really, really big for us. We're really happy for the country and, and um, all of the opportunities it's going to bring for the people. It felt like Christmas, like waking up and seeing your presence, but it was nice. Among these Bitcoiners, Monica Teher, one of President Nayib Bukele's advisors. It's historic. It's uh, incredible. From any standpoint, you look at it. Uh, you can see the celebration. I mean, people are static. It will take a lot of education for the rest of the Salvadorian community who is against uh, Bitcoin to get there. But we will get there as a country. So I have no doubt that this is not only the right thing to do, but at the same time that through government, private sector, and in this case academia, we should educate our population. Well, there is one place where the government won't need to educate the population, and that's El Zonte, 50 kilometers from the capital. Muslims go to Mecca, Bitcoiners go to El Zonte, you know? <laughs> So that's, that's what I'm thinking. This small surfing village was the very first in the country to embark on the Bitcoin adventure two years ago. There is no traditional ATM here, only a Bitcoin ATM, the first in the country. And in this village, most merchants accept Bitcoins. Is it possible for a uh, cafe al lado? Yes, I'm bien. Gracias, gracias. Puedo pagar con Bitcoin? Sí. ¿Y cuándo es? Tres. Tres veinticinco. Okay. And the man to whom we owe all this is this American surfer, Mike Peterson. El Zante was just kind of known as like a surf town, but now it's a place where people can spend Bitcoin. It's attracting a whole new class of tourists now, which is good because a lot of them don't surf, so that makes, makes the water not too crowded. He arrived 17 years ago, and with the help of some locals, they set up a Bitcoin experiment. Bitcoin Beach, a program that helps the poorest people by finding them a job, obviously paid in Bitcoin, and by convincing merchants to accept cryptocurrency. The initial donation actually came from another nonprofit. They had come to me, they knew I was into Bitcoin, and somebody had donated Bitcoin to them, and they said, hey, we had somebody that donated us a Bitcoin, and we're trying to figure out how to use it. We were already um, doing a number of things in the community here, working specifically focused on uh, keeping the youth out of gangs and so focused on education, youth em employment, and just kind of overall economic development. And so we were able to integrate Bitcoin into all those existing programs and then obviously expand on it. The Bitcoin pioneer here is Mama Rosa. She owns a roadside restaurant in the hills of the village. Pues, uh, o sea, un cambio diferente a recibir dólares. Diferente este porque este es electrónico, ¿verdad? Entonces, yo fui la primera en empezar a aceptar esa moneda, empezar a vender ya con esa moneda acá. Y bueno, a mí me ha parecido bien. Me gusta. Sé que no compongo el mundo, pero en algo he de ayudar. Personas que vienen de San Salvador, ven al rótulo, vaya aquí a aceptan Bitcoin. Ya me va a comprar acá. Ya, Bitcoin me va quedando la ganancia. Ajá, ese lo voy ahorrando. 
Es, uh, el teléfono es mi cartera de ahorro. Like Mama Rosa, Roman Martinez has lived in El Zonte all his life. He is one of the leaders of the Hope House, the Bitcoin Beach HQ. Bitcoin has been the tool, right? To use the Bitcoin to pay for more English class, for more computer classes, for more social projects. But in the reality, the community was getting educated in the financial system. 70% of the people until today, they don't have like a bank account. They don't have access to the financial system. But they have like a Bitcoin wallet and they can start to transact. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. The Sabo was considering maybe the place not to be, you know. Now, everyone is talking about surfing and Bitcoin. To this day, El Salvador is the only country in the world to have embarked on this Bitcoin adventure. And no one knows how this revolution monetaria will end. A Salvadoran revolution, which for the moment, does not seem to have convinced the large majority of its population.